I'm continuing our series on the Church of the Kingdom. If you remember, in the last few weeks we've been talking about the Church of the Kingdom. I mean, the scripture is taken from 1 Thessalonians. And today we are going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. I'm reading from verse 1. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now then, Timotheus, came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. For what Thanks can be rendered to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, the title of my message today is The Church of the Kingdom, a Strong Faith. The Church of the Kingdom, a Strong Faith. And, and obviously this passage of scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, has to do with the faith of the Thessalonians. Now you must understand their faith was strong. And the Apostle Paul wanted to make sure that it remained strong. He stressed their faith five times in 10 verses, right? Firstly, in verse 2, we see he wanted to comfort, that is to strengthen their faith. In verse 5, we see that he wanted to know if their faith was standing against the tempter's temptation. In verse 6, he received word that their faith and love were strong. In verse 7, we see that he was comforted over their faith. And in verse 10, we see that he wished to perfect their faith. The one thing that is needed by a Christian believer, especially during these times, is strong faith. A faith that honestly knows Christ, a faith that knows what it is to walk in him day by day, trusting him, Believing for his care, his comfort, his strength. What we need is a faith that stands fast, a faith that endures, a, a faith that perseveres, and that grows stronger and stronger in Christ. The stronger we believe and the more faith we have, the more we can conquer in life and do the things that we should do. A strong faith in Christ enables us to triumph over the trials and temptations of life and to fulfill our purpose in this life. Many of the believers in the Thessalonica church had a strong faith. Therefore, their faith stands as a model for us today. What a strong faith! Let's look again at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 
verse 1 to 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, 1 to 2. And this is what it says. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. And sent Timothy as our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. There was Paul's extreme anxiety for the church at Thessalonica. You know, the believers, they were suffering fierce persecution by both the Jewish and the Gentile citizens of the city. Now remember, the Jews had opposed Paul when he was in Thessalonica. They had aroused some of the rowdy men who hung around in the marketplace to riot against Paul, to riot against the church. And the believers had been meeting in the home of Jason. But when the mob attacked the home, Paul was not there. Right? But however, because of the uproar, he was forced to flee for his life. He had hoped that his absence would, 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 would stop the persecution. But his plan failed. The persecution continued. And apparently the persecution increased. The antagonists were determined to stamp out and destroy the gospel of Christ once and for all. And Paul fled to Athens. But his heart was in Thessalonica, longing for the believers who were suffering the fierce attacks of persecution. I want you to note what he says. He says he had reached a point when he could no longer bear the suspense over their welfare. He had received Christ. He had escaped the sin of, and death of this world. He had received eternal life. They, sorry, the Thessalonican church. When Paul had left them, they were standing fast in their faith. Had they cracked under these attacks of persecution? Or were they standing fast? They had to stand fast. It was a must for their eternal destiny depended upon their continuing to follow Christ. Paul could bear it no longer. He had to do something. He had to do something. So he desperately wanted to return and to stand by their side, but he knew he could not. His return would only add fuel to the persecution. What then could he do? What then could he do? He would do the next best thing, send his right-hand man, Timothy. Right? Timothy was a dependable servant of the Lord. Timothy was a dear brother to Paul. He was a minister of God. He was a fellow laborer of the gospel of Christ. So if anyone could help the believers, Timothy could. Now note, Paul sent him to establish. Paul sent him to comfort the believers in their faith. Now, the word establish means to support and to strengthen. The word comfort means to encourage and to exhort in this particular verse. Let's go on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your fate, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. What is strong faith? A strong faith is a faith that is not moved by affliction. The word moved is taken from a word that means to wag the tail like a dog. 
Hence, it came to mean to flatter, to deceive, to lead astray by some deceptive strategy. Leon Morris thinks, Leon Morris is a commentator, he thinks that this is the meaning of these words. Now, this gives us some picture of the types of persecution going on. There was an attack of spreading lies. There was an attack of spreading rumors about the minister Paul, a persecution of deceit and guile, a deliberate strategy of deception. And apparently this was why the rumors of immorality and false preaching were launched against Paul. Those who opposed Paul and the gospel felt that if they could destroy Paul, if they could destroy his reputation, many would leave the church and some would even join forces with them against Paul. There was also the usual shameful treatment, the normal mockery and ridicule and cursing and verbal attacks against Christ and the life of righteousness to which the believers had committed themselves. There was direct confrontation and opposition, standing face to face with the believers and opposing their beliefs and threatening them if they spoke about Christ. There was physical abuse by mobs. There was the use of civil authority. There was use of law against them if they continued to worship and speak about Christ. Now little could be launched against the church and its believers except martyrdom itself. But note what Paul says, no man should be moved by these afflictions, despite the shameful treatment and savage attacks. The believers is not to, the believer is not to be moved away from Christ. But when the attacks are so severe, how can the believer keep from being moved? How can we stand fast? I want you to note three things today three things. Firstly, the believer must know that he is appointed to persecution. The believer must know that he is appointed to persecution. The believer shall suffer persecution. Note that Paul had taught the Thessalonians that they would suffer persecution if they accepted Christ. Why? Why does the world persecute a Christian believer so much? Firstly, believers are persecuted because they are not of this world. They are called out of the world. They are in the world, but they are not of the world. They are separated from the behavior of the world. Therefore, the world reacts against them. Remember in John 15 verse 19, Jesus said this, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hated you. They persecute because believers strip away the world's cloak of sin. We, we live as believers, we live and demonstrate a life of righteousness. And such living exposes the sins of people. Again, in John chapter 15, verse 18 and 22. John chapter 15, verse 18 and 22. This is what Jesus said. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If I had not come and spoken unto them the words of righteousness, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. They are the believer is persecuted because the world does not know God nor Christ. They want no God other than themselves and their own imaginations. They want to do just what they want to fulfill their own desires, not what God wishes, not what God demands. In John 16 verse three, John chapter 16 verse three, Jesus says this, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me. We are, as a church, we are persecuted because the world is deceived in its concept and belief of God. The world conceives God to be the one who fulfills their earthly desires and lust. 
you know man's idea of god is that of a supreme grandfather that's man's idea of god they think god protects god provides and god gives no matter what a person's behavior is just because the behavior just so the sorry just so the behavior is not too far out they think god will accept and work all things out in the final analysis however a true believer teaches against this god is love but he's also a god that demands righteousness the world rebels against this concept of god in john 16 verse 2 to 3 john 16 2 to 3 jesus says they shall put you out of the synagogues yeah the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that they do it do it god's service and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me keeping these reasons in mind will help us to stand against persecution when it is launched against us and we must stand for we must reach the world for christ a world that's reeling under the terrible plight of so many desperate need and sin and evil and corruption and death and condemnation secondly the believer must know that the temptation to cave in to persecution is of the tempter that is of satan himself this is the very reason satan has launched the persecution satan launches persecution to strike fear in the believer and to silence the believer satan wants the believer to hush up about christ satan wants the church to desert christ so if satan can rattle the believer to turn away from christ to turn away from the church then he's able to use his desertion to affect to affect many lives satan is able to destroy the faith of both the believer he is able to destroy the faith of those who look up to him such as children family friends so the believer as believers of jesus christ we must keep in mind that satan is behind all persecution satan is behind all temptation to desert to desert christ remembering this will help us as believers to stand fast for no true believer wants to forsake god for satan right he our eternal destiny is at stake and thirdly the believer must know that the labor and message of the minister is not empty christ died for our sins that we might not perish Christ gives us eternal life. He gives us the privilege of living forever and ever in the new heavens and earth that he is to create. But if we desert Christ, then all the labor that has gone into leading us to Christ is empty. The work of the minister and those who have taught us will have been useless. We must not therefore give in to the temptation to move away from Christ we must stand fast in affliction no matter how severe that attack is standing fast in persecution is the sign of a strong faith in philippians 1 verse 29 philippians 1 verse 29 paul says for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 but now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that ye have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you what is strong faith strong faith is a faith that gives forth an excellent testimony when timothy returned from his mission to the thessalonian church 
he had a glowing report for Paul, right? Firstly, he says that the believers were standing fast in their faith in Christ. They were not buckling under persecution. They were not buckling uh, uh, under temptation to be silent about Christ. They were not forsaking their worship of Christ. In practical terms, they were continuing to study the scripture. They were continuing to pray and to worship together. And when possible, when it would not arouse opposition, they were sharing Christ and the promise of eternal life with all who would listen. You know, in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 12, the word of God says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hebrews 11, 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The next point I want to make is this. The believers at the in the Thessalonican church, they were standing fast in love. Love for Christ, love for each other and their fellow men. Right? They were ministering and meeting the needs of all those who would receive their help. And they were doing all they could to demonstrate love, care, and good citizenship towards all. In John chapter 13, John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, this is what Jesus says. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. The next point is this. The believers also remembered their pastor, Paul, with deepers of affection. I wanted to note that they longed to see him just as he longed to see them. Right? And this brings to mind Acts chapter 2, verse 42, where it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. In Philippians 1, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 and 5. Again, Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. What a dynamic testimony of strong faith. The kind of faith every believer and church should covet. A faith that stands fast in the face of severe opposition. A faith that demonstrates the love of God, the agape love. A faith that longs for fellowship with its pastors. Hallelujah. I want to go move on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 was 7 to 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 was 7 to 10. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and distressed by your faith. For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can be rendered to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and my perfect that which is lacking in your faith. <clears throat> what is strong faith? A strong faith is a faith that steers the hearts of its pastor and fellow believers. I want you to note four important points here. Four important points. Number one, the strong faith of the Thessalonian believers comforted Paul. Right? Their strong faith comforted Paul. And Paul def desperately needed comforting. The word comforted means, in this passage means, encouraged and strengthened. Why did Paul need encouragement? Why did Paul need strengthening? It was not because of the Thessalonians, because Timothy's report already comforted Paul's concern over them. I want you to note that scripture says, that Paul says in this scripture, that he was in some affliction and distress. And the words 
when you translate it, it's actually, they are very strong words, very, very strong words. Affliction, it means choking. It means intense pressure, intense stress. Distress means crushing trouble. Remember, Paul was in Corinth when Timothy arrived with the glorious news of the strong faith of the Thessalonians. A fierce persecution had broken out against Paul and the church in Corinth, and he was dragged by the Jewish religionist to stand trial before the Roman court. He was released, but the persecution against Paul and the church continued. You find all this in Acts chapter 18, verses 1 to 17. And apparently some threat happened to Paul that is not recorded. As so much that, that happened to him is left unrecorded. There's so much in Paul's life that's not recorded in the Bible, right? But whatever it was, it brought great affliction. It brought great distress to Paul. The point that I want you to note is this. The testimony of the Thessalonians strengthened Paul. It encouraged Paul in his ministry. Their faith in Christ was strong. And God used the testimony. God used their testimony, the testimony of their faith, to help his dear servant in a time of need. What a lesson for us today. Our faith is used by God to strengthen and encourage others in their need. Therefore, we stand strong in Christ. We grow stronger and stronger in faith. You know, in Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says here, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Secondly, the second point is this. Remember, I said four points. The second point is this. The strong faith of the Thessalonians stirred renewed life and purpose in Paul. Paul had been discouraged. I didn't say Paul was defeated. Paul was discouraged, but he was not defeated. He was discouraged because of the difficulties con confronting him in Corinth. But when the news of the Thessalonian believers reached him, it ignited a renewed burst of life and purpose in Paul. He was stirred to minister and to share Christ as never before. Note how the Thessalonians were a testimony to Paul, my friends, this morning. They were suffering terrible persecution, but they remained steadfast. Amen. So they are, therefore, their steadfastness stirred him to bear the persecution launched against him. These dear people were a great encouragement to their pastor without their even knowing it. They didn't even realize what they were doing. Their faithfulness was stirring the Apostle Paul to be faithful, stirring him in one of those times when he needed encouragement. You know, we will never know when our strength and faith are needed to help some dear believer of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we must always stand fast in the faith so that God can use our strength wherever he wishes. Imagine having the privilege of helping and encouraging a dear servant like Paul in one of his stressful times. Every church and believer has the privilege of helping and encouraging their pastors if they will only stand fast in their faith and grow more and more in Christ. The third point is this. The strong faith of the Thessalonians stirred joy in Paul. Very simply, the news of the Thessalonians, the, 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 the Thessalonica church, the news that they were standing fast in their faith was bound to stir joy in their pastor's heart. He just burst forth praising and thanking God time and again. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul says, As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, 
and yet possessing all things. The fourth point is this. A strong faith of the Thessalonian believers stirred Paul to pray for their fellowship and growth in Christ. Paul longed to be with them so that he could continue to share, he could continue to grow them in Christ, to grow that church, to build them up, to be conformed more and more into the image of Christ. He wanted to build them up and perfect whatever weaknesses they might have. What a pastoral heart Paul had. The heart to always proclaim, the heart to always teach Christ until we are perfected into the image of Christ. Remember Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. My friends, during this season, it is important. It is important for us to remain faithful. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the environment may be, when the world says we have doomed, we have hope as Christians. We have hope. Have faith. Uh, you might be going through many things today, many issues and challenges, but remember, always remember to have faith in God, to continue to remain faithful, Amen. because tomorrow your situation will be a testimony. That's right. Your situation will encourage somebody, Amen. no matter what the persecution is. Remain strong in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, Lord, for being a God that knows, Lord, our situation. You know, Lord, the challenges that we are facing, that we are facing as a church, that we are facing as a nation, that we are facing even in the world today, Lord whether it's the pandemic, whether it's governments, whether it's, it's economy, you know what we are going through. Sicknesses and, and disease in this pandemic, loss of life, loss of income, loss of hope. But strengthen our faith, Lord, because in you, we have hope. In you, we have a future. So we pray this morning, Lord, as your people, that you increase our faith even during this time, Lord, so that we may be an encouragement to one another, so that we, we may be a people that bring good news, that bring hope, that bring joy. So, Lord, I just speak your peace to be upon each one of us, your joy and your love to be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To our friends on Facebook, we'll see you all next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. To those who are here, please hold on.